Hey there, everyone. Are you sitting on a pile of cash, say $10,000, and you're not sure where to invest it? We're going to explore four different investment opportunities, stocks, specifically the S&P 500 and Dow Jones. We're also going to be looking at real estate, and then we're also going to be looking at high yield savings accounts, and last but not least, at Bitcoin. We'll deep dive into the average returns of each investment vehicle, dissect the risks involved, and lay out the requirements needed to jump into each one. At the very end, I'll give my personal take on which one is the best one, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss out. Before we get into the video, like, subscribe so you don't miss out on any future investment opportunities. So first up, stock, specifically the Fortune 500 indexes like the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones can offer a return of around 7 to 10% annually, on average, over a 10-year span. That's right, your $10,000 could potentially grow to $19,672 with a 7% on investment or $25,937 with a 10% return after 10 years. You might think that's not too shabby, right? However, with all these good things, there are some risks involved. Stocks can be erratic, swaying with the economic climate, companies' performance. It's not uncommon to see your investments' values plummet during a market downturn. During a huge economic recession like the 2008 crash, we've seen indexes plummet over 56% from their peaks. Historically, they have always recovered and managed to supersede their previous all-time highs. You've heard it time and time again, be greedy when others are fearful. Usually when the market plummets, this is usually never a bad time to jump in. It's usually, in fact, the best time to jump in. In 2021, we saw indexes drop 26%. But as of this year in 2023, most of them have recovered majority of their move down. I purposely left out options trading, penny stocks, low cap stocks because of their inherent risk. If you're someone that's not willing to invest years of your time into perfecting the craft of trading, I highly suggest not pivoting towards penny stocks and low cap just because you're more likely to lose money the first couple of years of trading. And it just takes a lot of learning understanding market dynamics, structures, patterns. So for the sake of this video, we're only going to be looking at investments that are one and done. So essentially you just drop your money in, and let the market do the rest. And in my opinion, indexes offer the best return on investment for this reason. So now we're going to be taking a look at real estate, specifically real estate rental properties. Real estate can be lucrative for your $10,000 boasting an average yield of around 10% annually from what we've seen. So imagine your $10,000 to $25,937 in a 10-year span. If you're wondering, why isn't everyone hopping onto real estate? Well, that's because there are hurdles to consider real estate values fluctuate based on numerous factors such as uh, location, economic conditions, sometimes unforeseen circumstances like natural disasters and such. Another aspect of real estate is property management. You have the challenge dealing with maintenance, tenants, disputes, legal issues. Not to mention the entry point for real estate is much higher than stocks. You need a 20% down. You're going to need a good credit score, not to mention closing costs, potential renovations. And obviously, we're not talking about flipping properties here because that is not quote unquote passive income. And it's completely relying on the property's valuation, right? Long term, though, I think real estate can be a good investment to build long term wealth. Well, if risk is a big priority, then this next one will be your best bet. And I am talking about high yield savings accounts. Accounts usually offer between 3% return on investments. So this year, given the current rate of inflation, I've seen them go upwards of 4 to 5%, actually. They're usually safer, less volatile option than the rest of the uh, options on this list. Over a 10 year period, your $10,000 could grow into $13,439, so around 3,000 bucks basically that you would make from this. It's not a get rich quick scheme, but it is a less stressful route. The main risk associated with, with high yield savings accounts is inflation that like we talked about. It's time to outpace that return, usually reducing your purchasing power as they call it. Another potential risk is the bank that you're associating your high yield savings with. 
uh, could shut down. We saw that most recently with the uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Um, but as always, the government bought them out. They were bailed out. So over time, that actually becomes less of a concern. Additionally, to reap the maximum benefits, you usually need to commit for a certain period of time. Uh, they can range between a year, I've seen them go to, to as low as three months. If you need to anticipate needing your funds in the near future, this may or may not be the best option. This is going to be the safest option, but what earn you the least. As they say, no risk, no reward. So understand your risk tolerance and see where you're more comfortable putting your money in. Finally, we have the digital gold of our era. And that is right. We're talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been a game changer outperforming all of these asset classes that we just mentioned in the last 10 years with an average annual return of 200%. Yeah, that's right. A mind-boggling 200% return on your $10,000 could look like $13,780,612 in a 10-year period. Those numbers are staggering. With that said, I know I'm going to get some slack for that just because I said that. That return on investment is likely to reduce year after year, right? We've seen that in the past 10 years doesn't mean that it's likely to repeat. As Bitcoin's market cap continues to grow, the volatility and its return on investment will reduce. With that said, there is still a lot of leeway for you to make money with Bitcoin. It's speculated that Bitcoin will eventually reach between $120,000 to $220,000. We already seen huge firms like BlackRock form spot ETFs, so you eventually should be able to stick your 401ks into Bitcoin. The risks, well, Bitcoin and the broader crypto market is known for its volatility. Prices can have massive swings within short periods of time, which is not for the faint of heart and requires a strong stomach for risks. In my experience being in crypto for seven years, the best way to stay invested is simply buy and not to look at the charts. Bitcoin has been around since 2009, so through regulations, bans from foreign countries, it continues to prosper. So if that's one worry, then you need something you shouldn't worry about because it's here to stay, in my opinion. The best part of Bitcoin is that it actually requires the least initial amount to get you started. Even a savings yield account sometimes can require you to have about a thousand, two thousand bucks. With Bitcoin, you don't even need that. You can invest ten dollars. You can invest as low as five to ten dollars or as high as a couple million dollars, right? Uh the world is your oyster. Plus, you actually have full control over your investments 24-7, all right? It's completely decentralized and can be held on your personal wallet. So like a hardware wallet, oh. digital wallet and such, or through a custodian like Gemini Exchange or Coinbase, which quick note, it's not recommended. Most people advise you get yourself, again, a hardware wallet. If you want to get into Bitcoin, drop a comment below. Let us know what concerns you have. We can make a video around it. I know that Bitcoin and the blockchain economy can be daunting because of the tech behind it, but it shouldn't steer your way. If anything, always keep an open mind to new things. And I think crypto is only going to be here to stay and you'll start to see it more and more. So with that said, what is my personal choice? Well, all of them. I know that's not what you wanted to hear, but the best form of investment is actually going to be a diversified one. You never want to leave all your eggs in one basket, as the saying goes. So you can either talk to a financial advisor or through a series of just learning, right? Education, you can create your own portfolio that aligns with your risks and expectations. Usually the rule of thumb I've seen is about put 25% of your money into each assets, right? One that's going to be safe, moderate, and maybe risky. But at the end of the day, I'm going to leave that up to you. So there you have it. Four different investment paths with their respective risks, returns, and requirements. Bitcoin seems to be the leader of the pack, but as always, it's crucial not to invest more than you can afford to lose. Our goal today was to inform you about your options, always conduct your own research, consult with financial advisors, and make informed decisions. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, share with your friends, and if you want to stay up to date with financial insights, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell for notification. And as always, keep learning, keep investing, stay financially savvy. Until the next time.
as always, not a financial advisor. Do your own due diligence before investing into anything.